Okay, good morning and welcome. I'm going to talk about music information retrieval and then more specific in the subject of mood detection. I'll say why, why mood detection? And we want to, we want to do, do a multimedia search and we want this to happen intuitively. We want to have a close relation to what we feel and what we find. And this is, happens in music and we want to fa have, have this happen in music as well. So I feel happy and I want to find a piece of music that makes me feel even happier or I'm sad and I want to be cheered up what piece of music can I find to fit that mood and to, yeah, to make me more enthusiastic and forget all this, the bad things or the stress I had about making a presentation <laughs> or when editing a movie and I say I want the scene to be a nice happy scene and then I need a piece of music to fit on it and I find, when editing, moving, I find, editing movies I find that the hardest point getting a nice soundtrack that emphasizes the mood you're trying to set. Because you could make, uh, using the same video clip, you could put this, the audio under it and it be a slapstick humor, or it could be tr depressing or it could be even boring if you make the wrong choices in this. So we have the, the general search that the music database has become larger and we need to search in that, so it's, somehow it has to be optimized. And then you have the tagging, but this will be, we have discussed this before and we've seen it in lectures, so I will not discuss that in detail. So on one hand we have the data with its properties and on the other hand we have the user with his desire, desires and we want to bring these two together. And a search, a search should do that or does that. So what we are focusing on is automatically extracting this, this information from the data. How do we extract mood from audio and not from transcripts of the, from the musicians or from other, other information sources but from the acoustic mu mu music data. So we have a WAV file and we're going to say what is the mood in this file. So what, what's going to be the content of my presentation? It looks like a lot but it's, I'm going to try to keep it short. First I'll discuss about mood and mood sets and this, is, this looks like it's the core part of what I've, what I've analyzed. How do we define mood? <clears throat> Then I'll look at features and how do we extract them, what are the main features which are extracted in music. I'll look at classification, how, how do you classify it, if you've got the features and you've got the moods, and you've got a piece of audio, how do you place the piece of audio into a certain mood. And then I'll look at yeah, the evaluation of the papers I've studied and the future work, what I think would be a good direction to go in with this area. So what is about the mood? We've We've seen the presentation about, from Alan about mood extraction in video, and there's some overlap. There's this player's model to, or two dimensional model where you have distress and energy or balance and arousal model. And it's been used in, in music mood detection as well. And it's, it's a rather basic model, and they have you know, four clusters in the music, and they, you place the piece of music in one of the four clusters. But this is the limiting part as well. If you have only four clusters, is this enough to describe mood? Or really describe mood, or do you need a broader sense, or do you need a, a multi-dimensional model, like like in the video where you're tracking through this space and you place the music in, on a point in the space and not inside the cluster. <coughs> another part is another way of doing it is using adjectives, and it's been done in, uh, for a long time. And in this Mirex, this music information retrieval ex exchange, there they they said, okay, we're going to make clusters of adjectives and these are the moods and they looked at which which moods are there or which adjectives are used in a big database as tags which are used the most and which don't overlap just saying there's one mood that fits to a piece of audio so we extract the, the, yeah, the adjectives that are used most and that do not overlap but if we look at these adjectives we can see yeah what what do they mean exactly with these adjectives or how do, does this relate to music this leaves a lot of room for interpretation, and this is what we'll find is the hardest part about using adjectives. How, do you, how does a human tiger, if you want to make a learning set for example, understand what is meant by these adjectives? And is this global enough? Or is this, yeah, it's rather vague. And is this not related to real human moods? Because I don't have a cluster one mood. Or if I tell you, oh, are you feeling a cluster one mood? No one reacts. Or if you're passionate and rowdy and those seem to you have to be opposites, and how can this be one mood? So this is good room for discussion. So what about the high-level features? 
the, there's actually three features that are extracted in music and are used in all algorithms for classifying mood and it's the rhythm, the timbre, and the intensity. Those are the three main features. And somehow there seems to be a block. How, why can't we go further and can't we find more features than these three? There's the bass line that's also looked at, the, the bass player or the bass place that has something to say about mood as well. But then you need a piece of music that has a bass line to start off with. And then there's lyric analysis. This is a, a new emerging field where they look at the lyrics and what words are yeah, in the lyrics and what could they say about the mood if someone is singing a lot of things about depressing, sad topics. It's probably a depressing song as well. But there's a lot of issues with how do you get the lyrics? Are they available? Should I extract them? Can I extract them from music? So that's not... Yeah, it's an interesting field of research and it shows that there's improvement to be made if you use the lyrics. But is this, re is this really looking at acoustic music data or is this going into another field? So in rhythm you could just mathematically look at the autocorrelation and see where we have peaks or you use other tempo detectors. So in rhythm it's important to find out how regular is this rhythm, how strong is the rhythm, uh, yeah, what is the speed. These things are say something about, yeah, about, about the mood that the piece of music is trying to set. And you have the timbre, something about the color of the music. Is it bright? Is it dull? Are there a lot? Is there a big uh, yeah, space? Is it very narrow? Or is look, you look at the spectral information in, in, in signal processing. And then the intensity, just how, yeah, how loud is it? Or how does this change over time? So this is yeah, it's all rather basic signal processing. And what we'll see later, how, how do people work with this? It's an interesting field to see as, uh, to take a look at. So the classification, the last part, and the part I think we, a lot of things are said about, and I think this is, in, in the study of mood classification, the classification is not a problem, somehow. They use support vector machines and they can classify nicely. But the discussion is how, can you classify nicely if you do not have a, defined, a good set of features and a good set of moods? So they have working classifiers. The, for example, the four-dimensional model, it can reach an 80-90% accuracy. But if this dimensional is, if, or if this model is too limiting and does not really describe mood at all, or then classifying into clusters does not make sense. You could use a two-cluster model and cluster everything very 100% accuracy in these two two clusters. But if this is not related to, yeah, to real to real mood, then there is no sense in classifying it into these clusters. And then there's the, the issue of the, the training set, which is, which is a problem, I think, in any classification problem. How do you get a good training set that is undisputed? So the evaluation. I, I think the problem, as I said before, the problem is in the mood. How do we classify mood and how do we model it? And I think that's where the biggest problem is. If you look at the, the Mirax model, the classifiers using that model, they reach an accuracy of 50-60%. That that's, that's, looks like it's a limit and they can't go break through the barrier. So then that's the question, how, is this model good enough or are we trying to model something that does not have this relation with the mood? And then uh, the, what looks, if you see, there are models that use discrete moods. You can say it's, one of this, it's this mood or it's that mood, but it can't be both. Those seem to have, yeah, have more limitations than where they say it can be this mood for 80% for and this mood for 10% and that mood for 10%. So you make it like a fuzzy vector and you say it's, it's part of everything and you don't really discretize. And this gives room for personal interpretation and a weighting. So you don't make this last step, say if this one is 80%, then it's this one and we ignore the other two. You take the other two into account as well. And the number of features we're extracting seems to be limited. We've reached some, some limit. We have these three features, but we can't make that step further. And why, why is that limit? Why can musicians say more about music than we can extract from, yeah, from, from signal processing of the data? And then there's the classifiers, which seem to yeah, work. But it, it, I don't think it's, it makes a lot of sense to, to look at the classifiers yet if the other two points are still open for discussion. So what my suggestions are as well, really go back to the basics. What is mood? And, Use, use psychology, people are ex yes, specialized in this area to 
really define how can we how can we define mood? I, and I think a multidimensional model is the best. You could shift around in this model, and this doesn't give the limit the limitation of drawing hard boundaries because if you find a song that's halfway on the boundary, you make a choice, and this could be the wrong choice. And it'd be interesting to look, if you, for example, take this two-dimensional model of balance and arousal, and you could ex find the third dimension, or a fourth dimension, that could really catch a depth we're missing, that would really, yeah, would really help. And an interesting thing I, thought, I was thinking about, maybe we could transpose this model, or transpose the axis to work for different cultures and different musical genres because you find there's there's a difference in what people think what people feel is happy music and then there's a search find find new new features as well especially go to musicians and ask what what features are you using in music and then make a new study on what yeah what how to extract it and then after consensus being reached on these two points does it really makes sense to go on with classifiers because it's like trying to live in a house while you even the foundations are still moving around all the time so to conclude to conclude there's no consensus on moods there's difference of opinion this should be reached and as long as these features change it's, it makes no sense to go into classification that was my presentation